To demonstrate the setting up and evaluating of a triple integral, I'd like to consider the following problem. I'd like to evaluate the triple integral over the solid E of 6xy dv, where E lies under the plane z equals 1 plus x plus y, and above the region in the xy plane bounded by the curves y equals the square root of x, y equals 0, and x equals 1. So right away, I'm seeing that z is being given to us as a function of both x and y. That means that for my first integral, I would really like to set it up with respect to z. So for my first integral, I'll be setting this up with respect to z. Now it does say under the plane z equals 1 plus x plus y, which means that 1 plus x plus y is going to be my upper bound, so that z is guaranteed to be below that. It also says above the region in the xy plane. Now right there, that's going to give me what my lower bound is for z. If it's above the xy plane, that would be above z is equal to 0. Now, as far as x and y are concerned, I will figure that out by actually graphing these things and making a decision on whether I want to make that a type 1 region or a type 2 region. So we'll refer to this region as being d. The y equals the square root of x. That'll be top half of a parabola opening to the right. y equals 0 will be the x-axis, and x equals 1 will be the vertical line passing through an x-intercept of 1. So the region in question would be this one right here. So if I were interested in setting this up in terms of a type 1 region, I would be bounding y first, then bounding x. Now, y would go from top to bottom. It is bounded below by the x-axis, that's y equals 0, and above by the parabola, that was y equals the square root of x. Now, x would then go from a constant 0 to a constant 1. No problem there. If I were interested in going type 2 with this, I would be bounding x first between two functions of y. So going left to right, I see that the right bound for this is our vertical line x equals 1 that we had. The lower bound would be the parabola, but in its current form it's not in the form x equals, so I would need to perform some algebra and get it in terms of, or solve for x as a function of y. y would then go from a constant to a constant. Now, it's not necessary for us to make a judgment call about which one of these we want to do until we've actually performed the first integral. So with that in mind, let's do that thing I just said. So given that we're doing our first integral with respect to z, we'll leave a double integral over the region d, and we'll simply evaluate a single integral from 0 to 1 plus x plus y of 6xy dz. After that, we'll do our double integral with respect to x and y in whatever order we want. Now, we are technically just integrating a constant here, which should be the constant times whatever the length of the interval is. Try to be a little bit more detailed. We'll say the integral of 6xy with respect to z is going to be 6xyz going from lower bound 0 to upper bound 1 plus x plus y. When plugging in those bounds, we will get double integral over the region d of 6xy times 1 plus x plus y. In anticipation of the integration that I'm about to do, I think what I'd like to do is distribute that 6xy to all three terms. We'll call this 6xy plus 6x squared y plus 6xy squared dA. Now nothing about this particularly sticks out to me, and you might have a preference over which one of these you're interested in doing. Things I'd like to point out, if we go type 1, we will have an advantage in that one of our bounds that we'll be plugging in for the first integral is 0. The disadvantage is that we'll have to eventually deal with some fractional powers. If you're okay with that, I would say go for it. In type 2, we lose the advantage of being able to plug in 0 for one of our uh, first bounds, but we avoid any fractional exponents. I think I'm going to go with type 1 for this one. So setting this up in terms of a type 1, we'll go 0 to 1. 
and 0 to the square root of x of 6xy plus 6x squared y plus 6xy squared. First integral will be with respect to y. Second one will be with respect to x. Evaluating our first iterated integral and integrating with respect to y, we will get 3xy squared plus 3x squared y squared plus 2xy to the third power. Going from lower bound 0 to upper bound, let's call it x to the 1 half power in anticipation of what's about to happen. Now plugging this in, we are going to get 3x times the square root of x squared. So it'll be 3x times x. For the second one, we'll have 3x squared times the square root of x squared. So that'll be 3x squared times x. So 3x to the third power. And for our last one, we will have 2x times x to the 1 half power cubed. Cubing x to the 1 half power gives x to the 3 halves power, multiplying by an additional x adds 1 to that exponent. This will be 2x to the 5 halves power. Plugging in the lower bound of 0, we'll zero everything out, and we'll be left with simply this. The single integral, or definite integral, from 0 to 1 of 3x squared plus 3x cubed plus 2x to the 5 halves power. All of these can be evaluated using the power rule. Oh boy, uh, so 7 halves multiplied by 2 sevenths, that'll be 4 sevenths, x raised to the 7 halves power. That was exciting. Now, plugging in 1 will give us just the coefficients. Plugging in 0 will zero everything out. So we're going to have 1 plus 3 fourths plus 4 sevenths. Establishing a lowest common denominator of 28, we'll call this 28 28 plus 21 28 plus 16 28 49 59 65 over 28. Now if you're interested in practicing this process for yourself, see if you can make it through the double integral trying a type 2 region and see if you wind up getting the same result that I do.